Welcome back. In this video, I wanted to fix this problem right here. So you see these um, upgraders and harvesters, they're all going to the same source node, and it's creating this problem with traffic. Um, so they're all fighting over this one node when there's five available over here. So in order to fix this, I'm going to go ahead and write this new function. So this is actually the second time recording this video because there's a lot of debugging. I don't want you to have to sit through. But similarly to the creep functions, I've created a prototype for room position. So going over to the documentation, we have this object called room position. So structures inherit from this, um, and the room, um, basically you can get the room position uh, from the structure, from the creep, or from uh, actually calling it with a constructor like this. So here we're creating a, a new room position at this x and y value in this room. And it's now POS is going to be um, a reference to a room position object. But in this case, what we're going to do is create a prototype on room position where we'll find the squares that are next to the room position and then eliminate ones that are um, unwalkable like ones with walls here or ones where a creep is standing so to start we're gonna start working with this function right here that i've written but room position dot prototype dot get nearby positions so what this is going to do is find the x's uh find all the room positions and put them in an array which are located one block away from the source position. So what we're going to do first is use the room position objects x and y, which are in the documentation here. Um, so it has this parameter x and parameter y, and it also has a parameter room name. So we'll use that in this function. So we're going to take the starting position, and we're going to find um, one less on the x direction or the y direction. And if the starting position was a one, this will evaluate to zero. So it will, um, so how it works is this. If you have a variable, if it's false, it will check the next statement. And then the, the return of this um, right here would be true because although the first element was false, the second element returned true. If it was an and, though, it wouldn't return. Um, it would return false, because this one wouldn't return true, and this one wouldn't return true, creating a false statement there. Uh, other examples were a, a zero returns false, undefined returns false. So what we can do here is this start x will either be equal to the position less 1 uh, or the default value of 1. So we want to do that because we don't want to include elements on this um, side wall of the room. Uh, because in the room constructor, your default values have to be between 1 and 48. So we want to eliminate um, any x and y values that will give us an error. So stepping down here, we have our first for loop. So a for loop has the following syntax. Let me pull up a for loop in JavaScript. So here's some um, W3Schools documentation on a for loop. But we have an initial variable, i. And that i is going to start at 0 in this example. And while the i value is less than cars.length, which is the array here. We're going to keep incrementing through and uh, increasing i by 1. And then on each element within this array of cars, we're, we can use i to get the uh, position in that array and execute some logic on it. So using this here, we're going to start with our our starting x value, which is always x minus 1 or 1. And while the x is less than or equal to 
uh, the original room position's x value plus 1, and it's less than 49, continue to increment. So for each x value to the left, the x value of the room position and the x value to the right, it's going to cycle through and so do the same for y values, one less equal to and more than. And if the x value is not equal to the room position's x value, or it's not equal to the room's y position value, it's going to push that current room position into this array. And when it's done with this loop, it's going to return the positions. So let's do an example here so you can see it in action. So here in the console, let's do on 25, 25. So this room position here, you can see in this this right here is the current curves position, so it's fine 25, 25. So it's on this tower. And we're gonna run this code. And it's gonna return an array of the eight positions that are around that tower, not including the tower itself. Okay, so what we're gonna do with this is uh, modify it a little bit more. So room position dot prototype dot get nearby positions. So we're going to change this to get open positions equals function like that. Okay. So let uh, nearby positions equal this dot get nearby positions. So the first thing we're gonna do is get that positions array and use it in this function. So you can make a function call um, to this prototype from the this element. So this is the room position. So we can call a second prototype like that. And then for Actually, we're just going to do a low dash filter. So you've probably seen this uh, if you've been watching this series here. So we're filtering the game.creeps object for um, creeps with a memory role of builder and um, eliminating elements from the array that don't fit that criteria. Here within the room position functions, we want to eliminate elements that are either a wall or have a creep on them. So going back to the documentation, let's go here. So room position has a look function, and it has a look for function. Um, we also have room dot terrain dot get, and this will return terrain mask wall. Yeah, we're going to use this one. So it's map game dot map dot get terrain at is the old function. So let's set this up like this guy. I'm going to copy this over just to make it a little easier. Um, so we need to pass into this uh, function right here a uh, room name. So going back to the documentation, Let's go to room position, and we see that it has a room name element. So what we're going to do is do this dot room name, and then now in our filter we can do a, a call to this terrain object dot get in the x and y. So filter um, 
nearby positions, I'm a function position. So a POS is the abbreviation I usually use for position. Um, return terrain dot get position dot x and position dot y equally. So we want to do a not equals here and train mask wall. Let open um, walkable positions equal. So how this filter works, if the element returns true, it's included in this array. If it returns false, it's it's uh, left out of the array. So we're going to do this terrain.get, which gets the mask type. And if the mask type is the same as wall, it will return. Well, we want to do the opposite here. So if it's a wall, we want it to return false. So as long as it's not equal to a wall, it's going to return true. And now we can return walkable positions. But we want to do one more thing. We also want to eliminate anywhere where there's, there's a creep. Filter nearby positions. And we're going to go back to the documentation and do look for. So this right here is the base code. So a lot of the documentation has some great code you can start working with to sort of get an idea of um, what you need to be doing. So position look for look creeps and then it's going to return a creep array. Um, so if, if there if the array has a length we know that there's a creep. So in this we're going to filter it out let free positions walkable positions so you're seeing this flow. So we're first calling get nearby positions on the room position. And it's going to return all the positions besides the position itself. And then this is going to look for any of those positions that have a, a wall and eliminate those. This last one is going to look for um, positions that don't have a creep. Position dot look for look creeps dot length. So let's explain how this works. So position dot look for is going to return an array. If it doesn't find any creeps at array length, it's going to be zero. So if, if the array length is zero, it w this whole statement would evaluate to false if there's no creeps. But we want it to say if there's no creeps return true so we're gonna invert the output with a exclamation point and now we can return free positions and I'm gonna move all this code and we're gonna give this one a try you do want to keep this terrain um, But now that should work. Cannot read property pos of undefined. Get open positions. Line twenty eight thirty six. Just like that.
So it was currently full and it only displayed one open room position. Let's do it again. And it should display all five. So now we can use this function to decide which um, source the creep should move towards.